Hello everyone, I'm Debbie Polachek. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about inspiration and the ways to get inspiration. There's many ways and one way that I think is a good way to get it is through Pinterest. Pinterest is a great source of all different type of uh, ideas and artists of all kind. Um, so one of my ways that I like to use Pinterest is to go in there and make a card and make a card copying somebody else's. And then while you're usually, well, at least I do, I, you might do the same thing. While you're copying, you can think of different ways to use the same technique, but with different way, uh, different ways of cutting the paper or coloring the paper. Uh, there's Pablo Picasso once said, good artists copy and great artists still. And what that means is you take an idea and, or something that you've seen somebody else do and you try to make it better. So this is a good thing to go by and get way to get your inspiration on things. I know a lot of us aren't capable of doing things as pretty as maybe, for instance, as a painting as somebody else. But with all of our tools we have with our stamps and stamping up stuff that we have, we can come up with some pretty nice art even through a little piece, little card. So let's get started with an idea that I've seen on Pinterest. Okay, this is the card we'll be making. Uh, is this one here that I've seen is uh, made on a piece of acetate. And uh, this is what we'll be doing. So let me tell you the measurements of the paper that I have cut out, and what all I've used. I did, um, did use markers. The markers that I used was the um, dark Daffodil Delight, the light Pretty Peacock, and the light Cajun Craze. And I've got some dimensionals. I got a piece of acetate that's five and a half by four and a quarter. I have some pattern paper that is three pieces of these that are four inches by one and three quarters. You can use either, either side. And this is the stamp image that I used and it's uh, stamped on a piece that is three and three quarters by one and a half inch wide. And this is the pattern, I mean the uh, stamp set that I use, botanical prints. And it comes with, and I assume that you just have to buy the whole caboodle because I don't see where they separated it out anywhere. So anyway, it comes with the all the different paper and the stamp set, some ribbon, and even some sticker-like things, and the little little metal uh, flies. But guess what? I cannot find mine. And they look real pretty on this card, too. They look real pretty sitting right here instead of these little stones that I have got here. But that's what I had to use since I didn't have them. And, okay. And anyway, I stamped that one long image there. Then I have a piece. This is all done with uh, shimmering white cardstock. I know you won't be able to tell this in the video, but it's got like a real light shimmer on it. It's beautiful paper. Kind of a very vanilla color. Okay, and then we have a piece of black cardstock that is six inches by four and a quarter that I scored a half inch down on the long side. Okay, we have five pieces of black cardstock. That is two inches by four and a quarter. Then I have one piece that is two inches by one and a half. I have six inches pieces of the ribbon. Okay. Now I mentioned earlier that you can take a uh, an image from Pinterest and do it in a different way. And while I was in Pinterest, I noticed somebody had taken. Our 
designer series paper. Let me get a piece of, uh, it's a six by six paper pad, that designer series paper of this set. And what could be done, see these are all the, you get these um, little things to put your sentiment on. And this is all the paper and the stickers. Even this little stencil-like thing to be used on. Anyway, what was what I seen was they took a piece of of six by six paper and cut it at five and a quarter. Did I say five and a quarter? I meant four and a quarter. Four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I think that makes up one of these. Actually, so this one's a little bit longer. But you can get two of these out of that. And then you take this and cut it angle to angle. From point to point. And you, you end up with this. And you can make another variation of this card like this by using this and putting it here and actually for this particular card you would probably want to use it uh, four by four instead of four and a quarter because I forgot about the, the little bit of allowance you might want for the black trim but anyway see that that's how it could be varied with two different colors then I just did the, the print on that and I made a square that kind of went along with that stamp set, with that stamp, that, with that image. See, and this could be also good in a square as well. that be something else that you could try and I tell you once you get started with these it's so much fun you want to continue okay so back to to our card here so anyway what I did is I got a piece of score tape on the top of this And I set my piece of acetate right along the side of it, the bottom of it, squared it up on the bottom, have it laid down, then push this little tab down and stuck it straight to it so you got it nice and straight by doing it that way. Okay. Then you can use score taper again if you like let's go, uh, but let's go ahead and color this first because when we decide which color we're going to put this on the berries I'm going to do in the in that peacock color so I think they're supposed to be blueberries yes they are see the little tips on them And these are typically green, but they don't always have to be green. You just kind of want to use, um, I think I'm going to use that light, the light daffodil light instead of the dark though. Because usually your highlights just want to be light, the lighter color of the two. So I'm going to paint the little highlights area in this light daffodil because it's a lighter color than the than the Cajun craze. Then I'm going to just put a little bit of the light Cajun craze in the shadows here. And the shadows are wherever the little black areas are on your stamp set. Now I'm going to go back with the bullet in of the yellow 
and just kind of rub in between those two colors together so it'll fade out. From light to dark. Okay. Now, since there is gray in here, if you want to do a little light shadow behind the whole thing, that gives it a pretty effect. Just go around the whole thing with the light, the light gray. Now you can do it just on the left hand side if you want to. Just it just of everything and that just really makes it look like a shadow or you can go across the whole thing let's go ahead and just go on the left hand side of this left in the bottom so wherever it would cast a shadow on the left or bottom of the object so this would be the bottom this would be the left this would be the bottom this would be the left left and the bottom Okay, and that was the light graphite, gray graphite. Let's see. Okay, so our coloring is done that fast. Okay, another little technique we'll show you real quick is how to make this little bitty bow here. And what you do is you take your ribbon, this is about a six inch piece of ribbon, tie it in a knot around your pencil, tie it real tight, then do it again, and tie it real tight, with all your might, then when you take it off the pencil, it'll have a little loop and you take your scissors and put it at a diagonal to that loop and just cut it at a diagonal and you have your pretty little bow. Okay, now I like to take it and put it where I want it in the front. Let's go ahead and go with it right there. Hold it there. Did I say this is three and a quarter by one and a half? In case I didn't, I've seen that written there. I thought I better tell you. I might have not have said that. Okay. Three and three quarters by one and a half. And you got your pretty little bow. That easy. Okay. And I'm going to put some dimensional dimensionals behind this. I just have some scraps here right now, so I'll use those up. And where do I want to put it? Do I want to put it on the yellow? Do I want to put it on the blue? Or the orange? I think I'm going to put it on the blue. The reason I want to do it is because it, the main, I think that main interest of this paint, uh, this little picture is the blueberries and that copies the blue background repeats that and it makes it more visible by using the blue over the blue okay and usually I squint my eyes the lighter color the darker color usually looks better on the uh, bottom, but I really can't tell. I guess typically this would be the darker one So I'm gonna put that one on the bottom first. I'm gonna glue it straight onto this center it though Onto this piece of cardstock That would probably be pretty nice too to flip it around and have it Like this, but I'm gonna continue to do it with the color. I like the color and one of my students from the class 
thought of this was, okay, first of all, when you mark the sides of where you're, you're going to put a sentiment so it shows up through the front. So you take a pencil and you put a, just a light, light pencil line here because this is pretty, for some reason, it's pretty hard to erase on this particular paper. So just a light pencil line where this ends and this begins. So, And then you can go ahead, this is what she thought of. Well, yeah, this is smart. And you go ahead and put this here where you want it, and then you know it ends. Wait a minute, I forgot the black here. Let me put the black on there first. Okay, now. I want just a little bit of that white showing from behind and then put a little pencil mark here and now you know in between this area is where you want your sentiment to be okay. let's get our stamparatus out as you can see I've been doing the same thing here but anyway I'm going to move it one inch down and one inch across. Put my magnets here. Get my sentiment out. Which one do I want? Thank you kindly. I'm always here for you. Friend. I think I'm going to put thank you kindly. That's one that I kind of use a lot. Thank yous. Ah, look what I found right here all alone. It was right there in my deal and I didn't see it even that day. Mercy. Mm -mm -mm. I can't believe this. Well, we might have not. Yeah, I, I did open it up and I'd never seen it. Okay, thank you kindly. I can't get over that. Okay, the kindly is down here, so I'm going to do it right here. And I've got that centered there and there and there and there, so I think that should be pretty close to right. And I'm going to look at the grid on this, and that still looks pretty close. But what I can do to make sure that it is straight is, wow. stuck my magnets together when you get your stick your magnets together don't pull them apart like this or they will break and hopefully they won't break when I try to get them apart now I'm gonna try to slide them success oh. okay so I'm gonna try just see if make sure that this lines up on this grid paper and I'm gonna flip it back around because I want to be sure and use it at that yeah, see, it lines up pretty darn good. Okay, so we know we're straight. And I'm going to do it again. There we go. Okay, one inch away from the edge. And one inch away from this. It's not really one inch because that's a different deal on this paper. Got the paper upside down. That's the way I had it before because that's the way that's written. <laughs> I can't get over these magnets here. Okay. Now. Okay. I'm going to let that dry a little bit because I think it takes a little longer to dry on this paper. On this cardstock than it does the other one. Pop the 
something off the right there for right now. I can't believe I thought, found those things, and they were right there with me the whole time at the class last time. That is something. Hopefully I didn't lose them now. <laughs> there they are. That is something. and try to erase these lines. Okay. Take this and glue it. Now I'm going to take this and move it over just a little bit like I did originally. A little glue here, a little glue here. I'm going to take this. See all the glue here? I'm going to cover this up. Oh, first of all, I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to trim off just a bit. because This is the one that I'm going to put in the where the seam is at. And if I have it just the same size, it won't close as well. So I need it a little bit smaller to fit in there well. So move it away from the score line just a little bit. Okay. That one goes there. This one goes here. And the short one goes here. that. Now we're going to take our little, one of our little bees. Get a glue dot. Maybe even two. Kind of roll it up a bit. Yeah, roll it up a bit on top of here. Get one more for the rear end. have him flying towards the little blueberries. So anyway, that's our cards. This was from another uh, set. Oh, here, this one. Yeah, it's from the Forever Blooms. Always and forever. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the card. Thank you. Bye-bye.